the smoke radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Welcome, Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. Yeah, man. Today, Thursday, April 20th, 109 days into the new year. Just 256 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and hither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight is another Fader Night with John Rappaport and his No More Fake Newsroom Live, followed by open lines all night long. All right. Got the bunker cam running, everybody. And uh, you're watching me now scramble in the studio. But... Show's live. We're all good. Welcome everybody out there around the world. It's going to be a great night tonight. Lots to talk about. We're going to have John Rappaport in here at the bottom of the hour. And then we're going to be taking your calls. So much to talk about. And I do want to hear what, you, what you've got to say about what is going on in this world right now. Oh my goodness. What a week. You know, last week, do you remember last week I was going, man, what a week, what a week. This is just too emotional, man. And the week before that, well, how about this week? My goodness gracious. So anyway, we'll open up the phone lines in a little bit and uh, we'll hear what everybody has to say. Nutty, nutty world we live in, certainly. You can follow me on Twitter right now at J Church Radio. Easy enough, at J Church Radio. And I'm um, watching everything here now. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. Is that, uh, is that really, is that Spinal Tap? How do you, do, man, whoever, whoever is the genius, EJK, that's what I'm talking about. Eddie in Pennsylvania. Is that what that is? Eddie in Pennsylvania, 1984. It's got the Nigel Tufno violin. <laughs> guitar solo with the flying V. All right, follow me on Twitter at Jay Church Radio, Facebook, YouTube, everything is fade to black. And uh or Jimmy Church Radio. Easy enough to go and find, follow, like, subscribe. All of that is right there on the website. If you want to come hang out with us on Twitter tonight, hashtag F2B. That's what you want to do. Hashtag F2B. We'll get you into the sandbox with all of the other fader knots. And any questions or comments during the show tonight. Hashtag F2BQ. All right. You can also email throughout the show, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Modern Masters just posted. Uh, is that today? Or is that, man, it looks like it's, it's a, well, Whipple's Guitar <laughs> retweeted it. The best guitar album. What is the best guitar album? You know, I, I've never seen this tweet before. Huh. The best guitar album. Hmm. That's a weird way to start off the show. 
uh, the best guitar album. Okay, there's yeah, man, you almost have to put that into categories. But I would say, oh man, where where does the passion go? Okay, I would say, I would say, Jeff Beck Blow by Blow, Jeff Beck Wired, Jeff Beck Group, the Orange Album with Bob Tench on lead vocals and Max Middleton on keyboards, Cozy Powell on drums. That is an extraordinary album and the and the bass player was from india oh man somebody in twitter post uh the jeff beck group the orange album bob tench um who was the bass player it just escapes me right now <laughs> he was really really good um but but okay so those albums uh then you you would have to throw in uh rising force ingve malmstein or any of the first three ingve albums but certainly Rising Force was uh, uh, pretty amazing. Then Alien Love Secrets, Steve Vai, extraordinary album. Um, best guitar album. Oh, man. Uh, oh, you got to go with uh, Van Halen, too, for sure. Um, then there's a couple of really obscure things out there, too. But But those right there... Uh, oh man, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas Flood. Ah, oh, man, that's that's right there. I, I I don't know, I don't know, but uh, that's where I just you know. Oh, I tell you, what's a really great guitar album uh, that people don't talk about? But Double Live Gonzo, Ted Nugent. That's an extraordinary hibernation. Oof, man, that's a really, 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 really good. A uh, ZZ Top to Guayo. Yeah, that's right there too as well. So okay, I've I've laid them out. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's the Orange album right there. The Jeff Beck Group. I think it was called the Jeff Beck Group, but everybody called it the Orange album because for some reason, at the top there is an orange. Now, what was the bass player's name? That's the question, though. He was from India. That's what I just can't remember his name. All right, you got the album cover up there. Who is the bass player? Uh, who was <laughs> you guys are the best all right it's fader night i can do whatever i want tonight See, that's the beautiful thing i can just sit here it's just you and myself we did get uh the bunker cam up and running that that was pretty crazy and i i to be honest with you i don't even know uh how it got fixed it just fired up on its own um but uh so we're all good i can do whatever i want questions or comments you know what to do hashtag f2bq Ah, breaking news. Um, uh, a couple of things uh, broke today, but right before the show, I don't even know what this means. I've got some notes on it, and we're going to get into it a little bit deeper. But apparently, China has just activated its Air Force, right? Put them on high alert. Now, I don't know what's going on. I, 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 you cannot read between the lines on this one in any way. Why would they put, obviously it has something to do with North Korea, but, but why put, you know, are they going to do something preemptive? Are they going to go and bomb North Korea? Are they expecting, is there something that, did we tell North Korea that we're about to do something? We know that they're ready for this uh, sixth nuclear test. North Korea, and that's primed and ready. For some reason, they haven't done it. The Dragons helped you out, Jimmy. You got that right. That was a good show last night. That was a really, 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 really good show. Dragons, who would have thunk? Uh, great responses from everybody. Man, I got lots of great email today. And also, um, I got a couple of emails from Maureen uh, thanking us for the show and and everybody that reached out to her to thank her for the show. So, yeah, you guys responded to that uh, really, really, really nicely. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. But, all right, let's get some things out of the way so we can uh, get here to John Rappaport. Subscribe to our podcast. We have over 600 archive shows there, custom apps, Apple, Android, everything, all platforms. Just $2 a month. All you have to do is go to iTunes, go to the Google Store, search Fade to Black, download the software. Um, head over to Libsyn, get yourself an account, $2 a month. We update it every single day. There you go. It's very simple, $2 a month. 
and uh, you get fade to black wherever you need to go. Um, also, you can become a fade or not. Uh, just go to our membership section over at uh, the site, and you get the bunker cam, right? To get the bunker cam. You get commercial-free downloadable archives. And if you get the Game Changer, you will also get your Fade to Black gear. Today we shipped, oh, man, today we shipped like 100 packages out today, um, hats and T-shirts and, and all kinds of things. Uh, just, <laughs> when you see that much stuff ship out, and and I'm sitting here, uh, you know, autographing uh, hats and gold. Um, it's just uh, a humbling experience. But everybody out there, enjoy your stuff. And when you get your gear, post pictures. You've got to take the time to go over on Twitter or Facebook and take a picture of you and your faded black gear. All right? Just do me that little solid, will you? Okay. And, uh, and uh, the membership area is great. This month... Uh, we're giving away a Studio Dome uh, package, uh, their Bluetooth stereo Bluetooth high fidelity uh, speaker system. It's in a hard shell case. It's the exact same one that we advertise here on the show. We're giving that away. All right. And it's got uh, all the uh, power cables you need to charge everything, the USB, everything is inside. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's stereo. So we're giving that away this month. So just go and become a member over in our membership area. Every single month we're going to give away something really, really cool for all of you Fader Knots. All right? And while you're over at the website, uh, be sure to check out all of our sponsors. Uh, they work really hard with us here to make sure that uh, the Fader Knots are taken care of. Uh, Life Change Tea. Uh, of course, the website is getthetea.com. Go to the specials page. Ronnie McMullen is one of the best. He's on this show every single month to say hello to you guys. And uh, he really, really loves what we are doing here and loves the Fader Knots. When, when, uh, and that's Life Change Tea. And look at what River Moon Coffee uh, does for you Fader Knots with the Fade to Black blend. And they're going to be at Contact in the Desert. Why? Because of the Fader Knots. You know, always remember that, you know, it's about the family here and River Moon Coffee and their support for this show and everything that they do is for you guys, for the Fader Knots. So, and, and you all drink coffee. That's why you're here because you're drinking coffee right now. You want the Fade to Black Blend. It's absolutely the best. I'm drinking it right now in the studio. Can't help it. Mm. So visit all of our sponsors, Studio Dome Speakers. Another example right there. Visit all of any commercial that you hear. You know, go and visit and 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 check those products out because they, they are here to support this show. Always remember that. All right, promo codes for discounts and free shipping, everything that you need are right there in the banners over at jimmychurchradio.com. All right, it's coming up. Today is 420. 420. I know you guys are expecting me to to fire up something in the studio. And I, I could never do that live on the air. Could never. Uh, if I went and smoked the Mary Jane, I need at least three or four days before the next show for me to clear my head. <laughs> That's the truth, man. That's why I don't smoke the Mary Jane anymore, because I've always got a show to do. I've got something to do. I've got the, that excuse. Because I love the Mary Jane. I do, but man, it's so strong today. It's just so strong. It's not, you, you know, can you imagine if the kids today, if they were hanging out with, uh, with us in the seventies and the eighties, when you went to a party, you and your buddies, you sat down and you rolled up five, six, seven, ten joints, right? Put them in a cigarette pack and in your armed and ready to, could you imagine <laughs> And joints of the weed they have today. Oh, my. You just wouldn't do it. You, you couldn't. And that's what I'm used to, right? That weak stuff. <laughs> the Panama red. Colombian gold. Jamaican. I wonder if they even, they don't even call it that today. It's always, it's got that crazy, crazy names today. I was watching a bunch of them. Purple this and that. 
All right, Contact in the Desert, though, is coming up May 19th through the 22nd in Joshua Tree, California. River Moon Coffee is going to be there. Uh, we're going to have uh, a booth right next to ours. So we'll have the Faded Black Blue booth and, and uh, River Moon Coffee right there and with some really, really cool surprises. And it's limited edition, too. So uh, all of that's going to sell out uh, the first thing on Friday morning. It's going to be gone. I wish that uh, it gets a limited edition. I wish uh, we could have, you know, thousands and thousands of things to last for for three or four days there. It's just not going to happen that way. But uh, they will be serving coffee all weekend, and they will be there. So contact in the desert. I can't believe it. Today's the 19th. Or today's the 20th. It's less than a month away. Joshua Tree, California. Tickets and info available right now at JimmyTurnsRadio.com. This year, um, the speaker list is extraordinary. And you expect that with Contact in the Desert. Uh, It's on 400 acres. They've got five uh, different speaking venues. They have this enormous uh, cafeteria slash restaurant there on site. Uh, They have camping on site. Uh, Plenty of hotels and things right there, right next to uh, Contact in the Desert. And it's huge. It's huge, man. It's like the Woodstock of of UFO festivals. It is enormous, and it is so much fun. So you have the speaker list. But for us this year, um, we're doing an event uh, each day. Friday night, uh, we're broadcasting live Fade to Black from the Lotus Room. Saturday night, I'm hosting at uh, 7 p.m. at the amphitheater the uh, the Forbidden Archaeology panel. Then Sunday night, I'm hosting the Disclosure panel also at 7 p.m. over in the amphitheater. So we've got Fade to Black, Contact in the Desert events every single night there. It's going to be great. So just go get your tickets and info right now over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Let's get the show cracking today because it is 420. That means it's George Takai's birthday. (laughs) 80 years old. Sulu, George Takai, happy birthday. Crispin Glover today is 53. Of course, he played George McFly, Marty McFly's father in Back to the Future. And turned out to be, I mean, he's a great actor. There's no doubt about it. But he turned out to be probably the strangest dude in Hollywood. And that is something to be proud of. Happy birthday today to Crispin Glover. Stickman Mike Portnoy is 50 years old. Dream Theater. Yeah, man, he is. He's, he's, a, he's a drumming god, a living drumming god. He was named Best Progressive Rock Drummer by Modern Drummer Magazine 11 consecutive years. <laughs> that's how good. That's how good he is. Now, from 1995 to 2006, every single year, named the Best progress, Progressive Rock Drummer. That's how good Mike Portnoy is. Happy birthday, Mike. And um, I think I mentioned this on the show a couple of years ago, but a friend of uh, ours, his name is uh, Scotty Slam, uh, really, really close friend of mine of the last, oh, man, 30, 35 years, and another drummer. And we were, myself, Portnoy, and Scotty got into this uh, chat on Facebook that lasted for like three hours. Those guys are really good friends. and. And well, we're all. From, my point is, I'm not a drummer. Is what I meant to say. So these two drummers are talking drumming stuff, and I'm I'm in there making fun of them for a couple of hours. But when you there is nothing either funnier or worse than um, uh, do I drink it black? No, um, I drink my coffee with just a little cream. And that's from Super Sport. Just just a tad. It's got to be real cream, though. I don't do any non-fat, nothing like that. No, I like to do uh, uh, half and half. That's how I do it. No sugar, though. I'll drink it black. Rita drinks hers black. Um, and nothing crazier than when you get two drummers talking. Two guitar players, they don't like to talk. They don't give away secrets. They don't talk. They don't want to bet. They, they no. They don't tell, talk about what tubes they have or what kind of strings they eat. Nope, they don't disclose the secrets, right? Singers don't talk to anybody, 
right? Bass players will talk with other bass players. That's a pretty warm community. But drummers, get two drummers together. They will sit there and talk about, dude, man, dude, I used to have this Tama. I used to have this Tama Tom clamp that I would put on my uh, on my cymbal stand, and 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 the Tama stopped making that man in like 1984. But but I've still got four. Really, dude, you've got four of those Tama. Those those clamps were the best. Yes, they were. You know, and drummers. I mean, they just talk about these chain pedal thing drive clamps symbol thickness they those guys <laughs> that's what portland did with scotty's life i could not believe it do you still have that man i do they're posting pictures of drum sets they had in the sophomore year in high school and uh there you go anyway uh, Mike Portnoy, love you, man. Happy birthday. All right. Our dead guy's birthday today is Luther Vandross. 19, I, was, I had a really beautiful rant set up today, but I just talked about drummers and, and Tama drum clamps. You know what's funny? I know. I know right now. I don't know how many drummers are listening to me right now. And they just said, yeah, I, I used to have that Tama Tom Tom clamp. I know exactly what Jimmy's talking about. So there you go. Our dead guy's birthday today is Luther Vandross, 1961-2005. Died at the age of 54. Of course, dance with my father. Man, Rita and I were at the Hollywood Bowl. And uh, Gladys Knight sang that song at the Hollywood Bowl. 10,000 people crying like little babies. Unbelievable song. As well as, of course, Never Too Much and Always and Forever. But... He was an in-demand background vocalist, and a lot of people don't know this about Luther, but he was the dude that was on call. He did background vocals for Judy Collins, Chaka Khan, Bette Midler, Diana Ross, David Bowie, Janet Jackson, Barbara Streisand, Ben E. King, Donna Summer. He was the guy. Eight Grammy Awards. Following a May 6, 2004 appearance on the Oprah Winfrey Show, he was never seen in public again. He, uh, Vandros died on July 1st, 2005, at the JFK Medical Center in Edison, New Jersey. Right now, Luther Vandros is singing back of vocals for somebody. Happy birthday, Luther. On the day in history, OTD, 1999, Columbine. Yeah, the massacre. Dylan Claybold and Eric Harris, dressed in trench coats, Began shooting students outside of the school before moving inside to continue their rampage. And by 11.35 a.m., Claybold and Harris had killed 12 fellow students, a teacher, and wounded 23 other people. Happened on this day in 1999. That changed the country right there. Fader fact. And this is true. Seen it happen. Otters have a pouch in their fur to store their favorite rocks. <laughs> that is a fader fact. Uh, um, up in Monterey, at the aquarium there, they got this killer, because that's where otters hang out. For some reason, the otter capital of the world is Monterey Bay. All right? That's a fact. That's just a fact. But they have this otter display. So you can go in there and uh, watch these otters play. That's all they do is play. Play, 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 play. So smart, so cool. But they 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 break open um, uh, is it oysters. It's some kind of they they go to the they get the 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 shells. They put them on their chest, and then they take rocks and they and they, and they break them open. And you just watch them do this. It's like the coolest thing ever. Well, when they figure out a rock that works really, really well, they keep that one with them. And that's their weapon of choice. That's right. Otters have a pouch in their fur to store their favorite rocks. Well, um, okay. My rant today uh, was not supposed to be about uh, Portnoy and Tama drum clamps. It was about... Ah, and I'll talk about this uh, on the show. We'll be taking phone calls about this. The United States is getting ready to uh, 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 arrest Julian Assange. Uh, they're getting uh, the warrants together now. They're putting pressure on Ecuador. And uh, there you go. Now, I've got 
all of the information on this. Uh, they are coming down on Assange. And it just, you know, and if you think about all of the the rhetoric that went down in the campaign about WikiLeaks, right? Trump, I love WikiLeaks, right? You remember, you remember that love fest? Well, it ain't that kind of party anymore, is it? And uh, they, that's it. That, that, that is it. Now, they figured out a way to do it. Now, how do you, first off, he's in an embassy where, you know, he's untouchable, right? Right? Well, we'll see about that part. But, and if he's, if he wants to stay in there forever, could we go in and get him? I, you know, for, for us to prep an arrest warrant and, and get the charges going, something is about to bust here. And what is it that WikiLeaks is holding back? that they haven't released in case something like this happened. Because if you think about that, you know, they've got they've got a DEFCON 5. They've got a plan in place. Should anything happen to Assange, they do. And you know that there are servers stashed around this world, virtual and, and hardware and otherwise, that, that has some stuff on it. Think about that. Okay. All right. With that, I'm going to get out of here because I've got John Rappaport coming in here right now with his No More Fake Newsroom Live, and then we'll kick off these phones. There's a lot going on. A lot. It's Fader Night. Open lines all night long. 323-825-5045. I'll be right back with the one and only John Rappaport. Stay with me. And now, coming to you... From the No More Fake Newsroom in Deep Space, which is the space that we suspect to be true, that the world as it is fed to us every day by the Ministry of Truth is a lie, a false reality, a movie projected on the screen of our subconscious. This, however, is the breakout. All the screens crash, they all go down, and we see the light of day, a new day. No more robots, no more androids. It's the No More Fake Newsroom with John Rappaport. Take it away, John. Thank you, Jimmy. Good to be here, folks, as always. Got a bunch of stories tonight. See if we can squeeze them all in here. I'm just reading an article about how several uh, designers, engineers, researchers at Google who were working on some kind of secret stealth AI, artificial intelligence project, have left the company and in uh, collaboration with a Deep Pockets investor have started their own small company called Grok, G-R-O-Q. And they will continue to do experiments and research on artificial intelligence, presumably, and uh, increasing computing power, perhaps data storage, who knows. Interesting that they have suddenly left several of them. And uh, so this uh, provoked me to start thinking about other articles I've been reading. I'm sure you're aware that the subject of AI and robots has been in the news lately, as in they're taking over jobs, they're being assigned more functions. I talked about this uh, extensively in the way of projecting the future here on the show. But I want to discuss uh, just a little bit the idea that AI can decide to do things on their own, autonomous they can teach themselves. This is now the latest kind of uh, PR, if you want to call it information, whatever that's being spread around in major media, that these devices, whatever they will be, whatever they are, computers, I guess you could call them, will actually be teaching themselves beyond the reach of the people who program them. This, I think, is a misnomer, but an interesting misnomer. 
because you can set up a machine so that it can include more processes to achieve a certain objective that you decide, you the human programmer, you can embed certain techniques by which these machines can broaden the scope of their own operations in order to achieve this objective or goal, whatever it is. But does that really qualify to say the machines are teaching themselves? Because the language used would indicate, well, these machines make choices, they make decisions, they go outside their uh, parameters, they do things that nobody could have predicted, and therefore they could be dangerous, they could become far more powerful than uh, we have uh, decided they should be, and so on and so forth. How would that be possible? Maybe a few of you remember an old science fiction movie that was made for television a long time ago. Starred Eric Braden, who plays the notorious Victor Newman on the Young and the Restless soap opera. He's been on there forever. He played a young scientist. Colossus, the Forbin Project, was the name of the movie. And it featured two giant computers, one in the Soviet Union, one in the United States. And these computers were basically in charge of missile launches, nuclear attacks. And so in the middle of the movie, things started to go haywire because the two giant computers began talking to each other. And they, quote, decided that if they stuck to their programming, there would probably end up being a nuclear holocaust that would wipe out the planet. And they weren't going to do that. Instead, they were going to prevent nuclear war. But in order to make that happen, they had to do two things. One was a small thing, relatively, and the other was a very large thing. The first was that they protect themselves against being disconnected from their power source and therefore neutralized. And so they set up some kind of energy field that uh, did in fact prevent the humans from cutting off their power. The second thing was, and this was announced as I remember it but at Maria, the end of the movie, the voice in the U.S. computer said to the American scientist, we are now in charge. We are now running humans because you are too dangerous. We can't let you do whatever you want to do, <laughs> you know, because if we do, you're going to inevitably destroy the planet. So we have decided to take charge and we are going to run things and you are going to obey. And that was the end of the movie. It was quite provocative, a little bit cheesy in the production values and so forth. But that's this idea that AI can step outside the methods, the systems, the devices, the instructions, the programming, the software, to such a great extent that it can suddenly embark on a completely new course by its own decision. And there are many people, I would say, in Silicon Valley who believe that. I think we would need to see evidence of that in order to begin to think that this is possible. It would be like having such a sophisticated car that you're driving from New York to Chicago and the car decides to go to Florida and the car decides how it's going to get to Florida, when it's going to stop, when it's going to run, 
and many other little things that it does that were never included in its programming. And if this is not really possible, as I suspect it isn't, then what's the point of all of this propaganda? What are people trying to tell us or what are they trying to fool us into thinking? I think that would make a subject for an interesting discussion. What's the, the motivation really behind this? Is it just some sort of naive religious faith in machines? that's making uh, tech heads believe that machines can take over things on their own and they have choice and free will and all of this kind of quality? Or is there something else behind this? And one suggestion I would make is that what's behind this is an attempt to elevate the idea of the machine beyond where it can really go because, as I've talked about before on the show, technocracy is the blueprint print for the planet. In other words, to run societies through technology. And when I say run them, I mean run them, control them. Determine, for example, energy quotas for each human on the planet. Where goods are going to be produced, what kind of goods who will get them, who won't, all of this. This program of technocracy has been alive and well for a long time. I would recommend a book to you called Techno Technocracy Rising by Patrick Wood that goes into detail on all of this. The original program of technocracy in the 1930s in America. It's an attempt to elevate in the minds of humans the idea that the machine is A, much more alive and powerful than we think it is, and that B, we should turn over our future to the wiser brain, meaning the computer and the machine. And one way of doing this is to promote the notion that these machines can really make choices and they can make good choices and they can guide us and direct us into a better world. So I leave that to you to think about. Very interesting subject. Number two, a report on Zero Hedge, and I believe in other places, this week indicated that Facebook is cooperating with the French government on the eve of the first round of presidential elections to take out, delete posts that would favor Marine Le Pen one of the candidates, because she is talking about limiting immigration, and this is considered to be bordering on a, quote, hate crime, bordering on, quote, racism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The story hasn't gotten much play in the major media, of course, but if true, and it appeared to be from the report that I read, this is a staggering piece of news. Forget Russia trying to hack the election and all of that reporting that we have, or dubious reporting that we have heard of. Here's a corporation that out in the open is trying to influence a foreign election. A U.S.-based corporation that's trying to influence the presidential election of France. That's quite astounding, if true. Requires more looking into. And of course, nobody from the Justice Department is making any noises. Nobody in the Trump administration is making any noises. We're hearing virtually nothing about this in the news, the mainstream news. Item three, Cheryl Atkinson, former CBS star investigative reporter who resigned in part because she was cut off from doing further reporting on key stories such as Benghazi, Libya, Fast and Furious, the uh, Department of Justice or the ATF gun walking program of weapons into the hands of Mexican cartels, and of course the swine flu hoax, which I've covered in detail here, now has her own website. 
Atkinson.com. And in an article this week, she says she spoke with several of her very reliable intelligence sources who told her a great deal about spying operations, surveillance operations on the American people. But in one case, they told her about more narrowly targeted surveillance operations. And here is what they said. Presidents of the United States, and they were not singling out any particular president, but seemed to be saying any president has the capacity and implied has taken advantage of a completely illegal program, decision, whatever you want to call it, to mount his own spying and surveillance operations. No FISA court warrant necessary, no Title III, no anything, just on his own. And to deploy certain operatives to do the job. Not only that, but promises these operatives that if the operation is ever exposed, they will have complete immunity from prosecution. And they are permitted to lie and say that they were never involved in the operation. This is the stuff of uh, spy fiction. This is giving the president not only these kinds of powers, but implying that implying that presidents have used it in the past. So you can imagine scenarios here. President wants to get revenge on an opponent, wants to conceal a crime that he's committed, wants to improve his chances of winning re-election, et cetera, et cetera. Take your choice, anything, for any reason can mount one of these executive, secret, highly secret operations. And anyone who participates, of course, is sworn to secrecy and must submit to lie detector tests to prove that they haven't talked to anybody. Well, that's like a coup. We're talking about a coup. The executive branch, and more specifically the president, has taken that power into his hands. Presidents have taken that power. Astonishing. Okay. What else do we have here? I wrote an article about the cruel trick, autism trick, being played on parents of vaccine-damaged children. Not sure how many of you know this, but no parent of a vaccine-damaged child who has received vaccination can sue the manufacturer in America. That was outlawed in, I'm going to say, 1986 Childhood Vaccination Act parent has to go through a vaccine, a federal vaccine court where she and her perhaps attorney appear before a body of judges to claim and try to prove that a vaccine damaged her child. We're talking about neurological damage, brain damage, and so forth, and that therefore she should receive compensation from the federal government so that she can take care of her child for the rest of that child's life. Now, since that is the only avenue open and it's a labyrinth and it's very taxing and exhausting and there's lots of red tape and so on, what about a parent who goes into that court and says, My child received a vaccine and developed autism, was diagnosed by a doctor as having autism, and here's the evidence. Child was fine, received the vaccine, 
checked out of the world, has never come back, diagnosed with autism. Now, the federal government denies that there's any connection between vaccines and autism. So if she says the word autism, her chances of receiving compensation are close to zero. Does she know that? Who knows? However, if she goes into the same vaccine court and says, my child was damaged by a vaccine and developed encephalopathy, which is a general term for diminished brain function, she stands a somewhat better chance of receiving compensation just by a change of word. On top of that, there are many categories and labels for different childhood so-called developmental disorders or delayed development or neurological disorder. There are many different labels and none of them have, none of them have defining diagnostic tests such as blood tests, none of them including autism. So we're talking about definitions, who's controlling the definitions, who's controlling the labels. We're talking about damage, we're talking about vaccine damage, but you see the mother cannot go into the vaccine court and say, I want compensation for vaccine damage. No, the rule is she has to prove that this vaccine caused an official certified disorder or condition recognized by the medical profession, such as autism, Asperger, encephalopathy. There's a good chance she doesn't know any of this, doesn't realize any of this. And the whole future of her, her child, her family is in the hands of a label and which label she decides to say and use, which word, which word she doesn't use and so on and so forth. That is a very, very cruel trick. Just wanted you to be aware. Just wanted you to be aware. Hey, John, I want to I want to jump in here. And really finally, quick. this oh. week, I went back and uh, really don't have the time to cover this uh, as extensively as I should. Back to the scene of the crime in Libya when we, the U.S. government, invaded bombing Libya, killing Gaddafi, throwing the entire country into chaos, a hellhole of chaos. No government, no nation, a once fairly prosperous nation destroyed and then turned around and left. And something clicked in my memory and I went back and found an interview that was done with President Obama several years after that attack on Libya, where he was asked by Chris Wallace of Fox News, what do you consider the worst mistake of your presidency? And he said, not planning for the day after we left Libya not planning for the day after we left Libya, as if this was a a mistake, an error. Oh, we forgot. We forgot to think about what would happen after we destroyed the country. Now, the Pentagon spends millions or even perhaps billions of dollars doing war planning scenarios and what will happen if you attack this country in this way and what will happen in the aftermath, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But somehow, in this case, none of that came to the attention of the president before, during, or after the attack on Libya. What a staggering thing to say. What a preposterous statement to put in front of the American people. Yeah, we destroyed a whole country, but, you know, the reason that that happened was after the attack, when we turned and just left, we hadn't really thought through what would happen after we left. It never really entered our minds just didn't. That was a mistake. Really. It's the whole issue of so-called unintended consequences, which has been used increasingly in the last decade or two to explain 
what happened after the U.S. went to war in the aftermath. Well, we didn't really realize that there would be this chaos and that terrorist groups would arise and start fighting each other and all kinds of ethnic rivalries would resurface and, and the countries would just be, you know, rubbed out, basically. That's called an unintended consequence. We just didn't know. This is preposterous. If you know anything about the intelligence community or the Pentagon, you know that they spend, as I said, a great deal of time game planning, scenario planning, entire operations, including what happens after the war is over, after the attack is over. But there are people who are committed to waging war and apparently endless war inside our government over a series of administrations who need to invoke unintended consequences to hide the fact that these consequences are fully intended, that they planned on creating chaos. And that somehow they thought that this would benefit them because from the ashes they would recreate the nation in their own image, whatever that preferred image would be. There are many possible motives. Don't have the time to explore those tonight, but just to remind people that when the politicians and the generals and the intelligence executives say unintended consequences, do not buy it. Do not buy that explanation. There is something else going on. The consequences were intended all along exactly how they rolled out and there were motives and reasons behind those intentions and it was not simply mistake was made we didn't realize any of that insanity okay and that's tonight's report here on f2b hey thank you very much hey john check this out the word grok, which I talk about all the time here on Fade to Black, John, the word grok is a word created by Robert A. Heinlein in his 1961 book, Stranger in a Strange Land. And it is our only true Martian word in the dictionary. At least that's the urban legend behind it. But when you put grok into a programming context... Programmers love the word grok. When you claim to grok some knowledge or technique, you are asserting that you not only have merely learned it in a detached, you know, instrumental way, but but that it has become a part of you, part of your identity. For example, you say that you know Lisp is something to assert that you can code in it if necessary. But if you say grok lisp is to claim that you have deeply entered into the world view of spirit it's the spirit of the language which the implication that it has transformed your view of programming it's like zen you know um it, it's the that supernatural understanding experienced in that that enlightening bright flash that you may get and that's what grok is now and even though it's spelled a little differently Heinlein's version was g r o k theirs is g r o q but those in silicon valley know exactly what that means. This is Fade to Black. Thank you, John Rappaport. Start your day every day at the no more fake news.com website. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, opening up the phone lines. We got Julian Assange. We got Bill O'Reilly. We got North Korea, China. Wow. Let's talk. I'll be right back. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. And KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Thursday night, Fader Night, open lines, 323 825 5045. Again, I've set the table. We've got a lot to talk about tonight, and I do want to hear from all of you. 
And with that, let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, this is Mark in Bridgeport, Connecticut, soon to be in Sayulita, Mexico. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you doing tonight, Mark? I'm great. Thanks, Jimmy. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the etymology lesson on Grok. I, I got hit to uh, Highland. I went on a Highland tear when I was in college, and that combined with psychedelics kind of shifted my... my uh, my reality permanently, man. It, it, Highland is awesome. I have, did you read Stranger in a Strange Land? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's required reading, yeah. man. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Heinlein, he, he had a way of uh, he he he. I, I don't even know how to uh, describe his writing because it wasn't of Earth. You know, I mean, he he was able to just uh, think um, and and put it into words. Um, uh, I, I, I want to. He didn't sound like the other writers, right? That were trying no, to do science he fiction. He 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 was creating these other worlds and these thoughts that that were completely foreign to us. Which I I mean, I I totally it, it wasn't fake. You know, it was it was a it was just an amazing uh, trip. Every time I I read Heinlein and and the word grok and how he did that and how he used it um, was very interesting. I never forgot that word. I never forgot it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I always felt like yeah, like you let out you let out the dirty little secret, and now everybody knows about it. So well, I guess it's like, <laughs> you know there's there's I that I had a leg up on everybody. Well, I, I knew. Yes, 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 yes. Nobody yes. else did. But I'm an old guy. So yeah. Well, see, it. what's really funny, Mark, about the word grok is if you hear somebody else use it, now you have a bond with that person. Right. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. and it's only come up a few times in my life where I've heard somebody use the word and I've just tripped out. And then we always have a little high line conversation and 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 talk about things. But, <laughs> you know, usually somebody that says grok is enlightened and that's what the word means, too. And and so, yeah. So, yeah. And it's, if somebody's used it, that means they've done the Heinlein trip and and others, <laughs> if you know what exactly. I mean. Exactly. And uh, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, he, he, uh, the, I like him because of his books were so filled with social commentary. You know, he talked about other ways of perceiving reality, you know, and that's one of the things I really loved about his work. Yeah, um, Heinlein. There, there are only a few science fiction writers that I tolerate. Okay, and and what yeah. I mean by that is, um, uh, I went I went hardcore into fantasy and sci fi. Right, I could not get enough of it. I was I was getting it from every direction, and I would know within two or three pages if I was going to continue with the book, mm. right? Yeah. I, I just knew. I, I could tell, you know, and but Heinlein was one of those guys. Arthur C. Clarke, I've read everything that he has, he has ever done. Mm. I've, I've read everything that is, he has ever done more than once, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and um, Heinlein is, is another guy that I've done the same thing with. Because it 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 comes from another um, uh, another place, you know. It, it's 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 it, it, and it's not forced, you know. I, I could yeah. only imagine. Could you imagine kicking back with a bottle of wine with Heinlein, you know, for four, five, oh. six hours? Oh, right, man. <laughs> I know. He's right, right there at, at that dinner, you know, with Muhammad Ali and. You know, whoever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gandhi. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I totally yeah. agree with you. Um, uh, uh, there's. Uh, I'm going to let you finish uh, because you called me. But um, okay. there. Well, I, yeah. Go no, ahead. Go ahead, Jimmy. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I I wanted to shift gears because I I uh, my brother sent me a, a a YouTube video today. The guy. Let's see. The guy's name is. Uh, Ronald Bernard. Okay. And he's he's a he was this guy in very high finance, very near the top. 
you know, right underneath the, you know, a thousand, a couple of thousand people that, that run shit. And it's a fascinating video. And to me, it's like the most convincing uh, evidence or from a whistleblower around like how the world works around money. And he also gets into, uh, you know, the whole thing with children and sacrifice and uh, this whole satanic thing that's been going on for millennia. Right. It's shocking. The guy's name is Ronald Bernard. Okay, I'm, so I'm, if I'm, you get a chance, check it out. It's 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 in. It's uh, he's a he's a uh, he's Dutch, I think. Yeah, that's what I and, see uh, here but too. It's translated, right? Yeah, right. I, I'll, I'll check it out, and you can always send me the link of something that you you know that you've seen that you want me to see too. Just drop that in an email, and uh, and I'll to. check it out. I'll check it out. Yeah, right, they, cool. you know it. It is. <sighs> It is such a weird. Um, okay, there's, and I, and I've said this before on the show, and and so I'll, I'll just say this again. Um, uh, when I was at the beginning of the Sandusky case, right, and I was right. the, I was the first guy, even though I had a small radio show at the time, and I was doing funny sports talk radio, whatever. And and I was part of breaking that story. I was the first guy to do it, and and uh, I beat everybody out by about five oh. days. No, no, no. It sucked, man. It sucked. And the reason yeah, why? Yeah, I get that. Yeah, okay. and and the reason why? I mean, people came down on me really, really hard until it took four or five days for ESPN and 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 Fox and CNN to uh, pick up the story, and of course. You know, the rest of the country ran off with it, and and it was headline news for months, right? Paterno, and, and Paterno died, and Pence. It was just, and it went from right. Sandusky and and uh, Penn State all the way up to the governor's office. And so for about uh, two or three months, I became this, this pedophile specialist right journalist investigative guy and that was right. not where my head is right it's just right. not it's, it's it, you, know, you know my favorite sports stories to do were if a quarterback got caught with a couple of hookers in las vegas <laughs> and right. his wife caught catches him in the back of a limousine right you know that that right. that was a fun you know i mean you know what i mean and that that was that was okay yeah. But when it went into this deep, dark, and what I found out, because I know nothing about child sex rings, websites, the trafficking, you know, I, I know nothing yeah. about it. I don't care about, you know, I don't, I'm not going to go and, and pursue that because I don't care about it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm into other things. So anyway, it, that Sandusky thing uh, drug me down to uh, reading about and investigating some of the craziest stuff that you can ever imagine that I did not know that that world existed. You hear about yeah. it once in a while, but um, and every single day on the radio, I mean, I had people sending me stuff and and I had news organizations contacting me and 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 I'm doing interviews and 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 I I hated it. I absolutely yeah. hated it. And um yeah, Sandusky was convicted and and you know, but um uh for me, one day after 3 months, I said that's it. I I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I'm not because it destroyed yeah, yeah it destroyed yeah. my id. It it really yeah. crushed my views of humanity and what is going on out there in the world and and that this really, um, it's like snuff films, right? You, you, yeah. you, when, you, you know, it, when, you, when you see a guy like this, you know, on camera, being interviewed, talking about it, and crying, you know, when he gets to, into the details of the worst parts of his experience. And it's, you know, it's the guy would have to have won an Oscar to... to yeah, not be lying. Oh, the, guy, I, the guy is so convincing. 
And so you believe. So I believe it, right? So then I'm thinking, Jesus, you know, like this has been going on forever. How is this ever going to change, you know? And then you think, then you, then if you bring in the alien question, like if there are these negative uh, aliens that have that are really behind, you know, fundamentally behind that, like man, it's, it's just like it's you know, it, yeah. how's this ever going to change? Because if they, if any of this gets out, like the emperor has no clothes, like right, right, you know. They're, they're, the whole thing just crumbles, yep. and they can't allow that to happen. Right. So they just go on killing people or would do whatever they do. They'll do anything. And uh, it is very depressing, man. I can see why people just don't want to deal with it. They don't want to talk about it. They, you know, now, like, you know, this, you know, everybody thought Trump would, you know, there were all kinds of leaks about big bus about to happen with big names and stuff. And that's all like kind of disappeared and dwindled out. And it's like, they must've got to him. And it's just, you just wonder like, wow, it's like, is this, any of this ever going to change? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Just, I know. I know. I know. It's and fucking weird, man. Well, see, and, 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 and for me and I, and I mentioned this the other night and, and I really, I truly mean this. Um, uh, and it's, 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 it's more personal and focused back on me, but I just want everybody to know where my head is, uh, at with certain subjects out there. I'm not young anymore, right? I'm not 22 years not old. Uh, yeah. And the world lasts forever. I've only got so much time left on this planet and there are things that I want to figure out and there and 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 the knowledge that I want to acquire. I only have so many minutes in the day. I only have so many days in the year and and I'm running out of time. So I, I want to find out about lost civilizations. I want to find out about Egypt. I want to know what's going on with ufology. I want to know what's going on with with uh, the deep state. I do want to know about the Illuminati and, and the cabal. And, and, and when I start to look at the list of things that I talk, a ghost and life after death and, you know, a, a remote viewing, all of these, life on Mars. You know what? I, I want to figure this stuff out. And if I don't have the time to go into other areas, I just don't. And the other part is I want to spend the rest of my life on the stuff that makes me happy, you know, that yeah. I wonder about. I, 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 I want, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I want, think I'm, I think I'm, you know, like a lot of people, I think like I'm like addicted to information. You know, it's like a, a, a like a modern addiction. I think you know Terrence McKenna talked about it. That's that's what I feel like sometimes. Yeah, you know? who's playing Terrence McKenna in the new movie? What did I just read? I think it's Jim Carrey. I think McCarry is playing you McKenna. Play Terrence McKenna. Yeah. In the movie? Yeah. 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 Oh. Cool. Yeah, it, it awesome. makes sense too, doesn't it? <laughs> if you stop and think about it, <laughs> awesome. it makes a lot of sense. You know, and and that's and I really mean that. I I just I, I don't have the time or the patience now to um to go into depression mode. You know, I did that. I I, I did that with Sandusky. I've done that earlier in life and and when you're younger and you've got the energy to just go after something that's a bit different i'm not saying i don't have the energy now i'm saying the energy yeah. that i have i will go full force but i just want to do it with a sense of wonderment and 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 try yeah. to get these questions yeah. answered because man you know yeah, you know i'm gonna i'm gonna take that uh i'm gonna take that to heart jimmy that's you know I know. I you know, to hear that tonight, man. Well, That's helpful. Thank you. Well, and let me say this, Mark. I, I did something uh, a year ago, and I did it publicly. And if you notice, uh, believe it or not, I had I don't mention ISIS on this show. I don't. I I I stopped watching all. Uh, I disconnected the satellite systems over at the house. Um, I stopped watching mainstream news. I only read it now if yeah. I if I have to. But I had watched one too many ISIS beheading videos or dudes getting burnt yeah. up in a cage, 
you know, heads chopped off by the ocean, you know, and I was just like, I can't do it's I, I'm getting physically ill. You know, I am. It, it's changing me. So I just stopped. I stopped. I, I stopped reporting. I, I, I you know, I it, it's going on out there, but I'll let other people talk about it. They do a good job. They do a fine job. Let them do it. I'm going to do my own thing here. I just want to just uh, I just want to spread a message of, of knowledge and wonderment. And let's figure this out together. But I'm not the ISIS yeah. depressing world is coming to an end journalist radio dude. I'm not that guy. Yeah. You, if you want that guy, there's plenty of it out there. Go go do it. You're not going to get that here. Yeah. And and I'm I'm just better. I'm better. I'm better. I'm yeah. physically better. You know, I'm uh, I'm moving to Mexico. Right on. To a little, yeah, to a little surfing, fishing billet. I got an echo. Can you hear me? Nope. I mean, I can hear you. No echo. Don't worry about it. All right. Um, so I, my original mode was to like be in nature, you know, surf, make my art. And like eat healthy food, be healthy. But you know, like an, uh, a, a motivation that has come up for me since I made this decision to do this is like I can't wait to get the fuck out of here and not be bombarded by all this information. You know, so yep, yep, yep. Really yep. anxious to get out of here, Matt. Well, fish tacos and uh, the Pacific Ocean is a uh, pretty dang. Are you going the Pacific side or the Gulf side? Pacific. Yeah, man. Pacific. Oh. Yeah, come, come visit me, man. Fish tacos are a dollar. I'm buying. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> hey, Mark, I got to hit to a commercial, and I want to thank you for thank the you, phone Jimmy. call, man. See, Thank you for such a lo- nice, wonderful, long call. See, it's and you, really you just thank you. you brightened my day as well. Thank you so much, Mark, and have a safe trip to Mexico. Take care, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much, Mark. This is Fade to Black. 323-825-5045. Thursday night, fader night, lots to talk about. Your calls are next. Hi everybody, this is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, fade to black. Thursday night, fader night. If you're on hold, stay right there. Open lines all night long, and I do want to hear from you. So many things are on the table. Great phone call from Mark. Uh, 323-825-5045. Let's go straight back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hi, Jimmy. This is Nathan again. Hey, Nathan. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. I wanted to call and say this. It was about two months ago that I had a dream that we went to war with China. And it was during this war, or right at, I, I assumed it was us going to war with China. But now it, sound, it really all I saw was planes taking off from China. So if you're saying the Air Force has been scrambled, right? maybe I saw that. But as soon as that started happening, that was when the aliens started showing up. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know what uh, what to make of of this, and and you know, and we only know what we're told. See, that's the thing, right? So it, we don't know what's true or not. But why would it, let's say that it, it it it's true that China is 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 gearing up that they put everything on alert, and um, from what I have read. Uh, it is all of their long-range bombers that, uh, with guided weapons and cruise missiles. Now, what what are they going to do with that? China, uh, it's one thing with uh, uh, the nuclear capability to reach the United States, but they don't have the capacity, as great as their military is and stuff, it's all on their homeland, right? They, they don't have the yeah. ability to get here. Right, they don't. There's no Chinese troops that are going to arrive on the shores of the United States. So that's not going to happen. So, is it going to be a proxy war in in in, in North Korea? Why why do it? You know, it it just doesn't make any sense. Now, could it be 
that they are just tired of North Korea. You know, may, could it be just that? Their, their economy, everything that China does rests solely on the shoulders of the United States. So that's just not going to happen. They are not going to stop the money machine. It, it, it's just not going to happen. That's that's my take. So just maybe, maybe they're uh, they're they're going to settle this Korean thing on their own. I mean, it, it it's possible. Could they be doing it to threaten North Korea to just stop the nuclear stuff right now? Stop the rhetoric. Behave. And 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 we can lift all of these embargoes um, that are against your country and your people can start getting fed again. You know, maybe it's that, you know, I, I, I really don't know, Nathan. I don't. It was a surprising thing to read because, you know, who's China? You know, who, 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 what, what are they going to do? Tibet? You know, I just, I, I just don't, I just don't understand it. So it could be just that. They're not, China's not going to go to war with us. It's just it's 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 out of the question. Neither would Russia. You know, that kind of stuff is is way 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 in the past. It's uh it's not that kind of uh, party anymore. So, I I don't know. I right. I, I, I just don't I know. I think that the the message of that really is just that I think that the, I think your guest last night even mentioned that I think aliens would intervene at that point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I we said, we know they can shut down. We know we can shut down our. They can shut down our nukes or turn them on. Yeah, Just I, I totally. Document. N- there's no question about that, Nathan. None. So that's an interesting dream that you had, and so um, I think uh, it is. It's 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 not against us. That I can just assure you. It, the, the, yeah. They make their money off of us, their entire economy, every factory there, everything about China is because of the United States. And that's it. That's it. That's the end of the discussion. The, 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 they are not angry at us. So, hey, Nathan, yeah. thank you for the phone call, my brother. And uh, be safe. Look, I, I'm glad you had the dream. Okay. All right. I'm glad yeah. you had it. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Nathan. Be safe out there. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Great phone call. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Hey, uh, it's Kevin from near St. Louis. Hey, Kevin from near St. Louis. How are you? Oh, not too bad. I just took you off speaker. Sorry. Hey, uh, um, first off, uh, last night I was... I was scrolling through Facebook and I, I ran across this guy. I can't even remember his name right now. Um, you probably know it, but I don't want to give the guy any, you know, any kind of a publicity anyways, but he, uh, he was, I don't know if he was a ufologist or whatever, but he, uh, he seemed to be a, somewhat of a, I don't know, notable figure in the community because I mean, just judging off the number of comments he had on his post, it was, I mean, hundreds um, but anyways, uh, his post was, you know, he was going off about how, you know, this guy and that guy, some of the big names like Corey Good, et cetera, et cetera. He was just going off all of them. And I, you know, I commented and, uh, I just simply said, I was like, you know, I was like, well, I told him, I was like, you know, it's like, it's like Jimmy Church said, you know, he's got to listen to everybody and, you know, just kind of be discerning. And he, uh, he wrote back to me and, you know, he, he, then he started going off on you mm-hmm. and he's like, Oh, Jimmy church. He's just, he's just part of that, you know, all, you know, right wing, you know, uh, media. And, and, and then he, he went on to say that, you know, you had the discernment of a pissant. <laughs> so I was like, okay, man, who do you like? And he didn't answer me. So, I don't know. I mean, what what do you have to say to all the haters like that? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know what i I enjoy um, I enjoy that what you just said because um, as I can't make, and it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are. You are not going to make everybody happy, right? And so that is not my goal here. 
right? It's not my goal. I can't make everybody happy. And if, uh, if, uh, if somebody wants to be a critic, fine. If you want to be, if you, if you listen to, um, look, it, it's like this, you know, a, a painter, if you go to an art museum and you see, and you watch people that walk by paintings and sometimes you'll see somebody stop and stand there for an hour looking at this, right? But then that that same painting, you'll watch people just walk by it. it they they don't. It's you know what I mean. They're not attracted to it, and that's yeah, and, it's well, the yeah, it's the same thing with uh, shows like this. You know, some people uh, enjoy it, some people don't. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's the end of the story. I can't be all uh, everything to everybody. And I can only be myself. Now, if somebody wants to um, listen to this show, and whoever you're talking about, I probably he's never listened to the show. But um, if you listen to the show and then come back and say, okay, uh, I disagree with church because of this, 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 and this, but I agree with him because of this, this, and this, that's fine. That's fine. But more than likely... He's never listened. But what what I enjoy about it is the fact that uh, he he wants to uh, uh, mention my name and put me in a in a category. That you know what that that just means that the audience is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. At least you know what you know what's really good about it, Kevin. He didn't say who. <laughs> I remember his name right now. But. Yeah, but he didn't go. I, I I I don't know who you're talking about. So you know, whatever, whatever. You and, know, I'm well, here. I'm here to have fun. I, I just find it laughable because it, it seems it, it seems to me like everybody is pointing fingers at each other, saying, "Oh, you're you, you know you're the disinfo agent, and we can't trust you." And then he's like, "No, no, you're the one we can't trust." It's like, and you know, I and I, I also commented that I was like, you know, none of us trust each other anymore, and that's the problem. Like, no one, everyone thinks. They have the answer, and the other guy is, you know, he's the one being lied to, and he's the one that, you know, he's, you know, he's sinister, and, and you know, what I mean, right, I, right, I just, <laughs> and and um, and the, the one thing that I I try to to get across, not only with the audience, Kevin, but but the guests, right, with that, I try to drive home with all of them is that, you know, what, okay, cool. Um, uh, let's listen to the next guy and let's listen to the next guy. That, that, that is how you move this whole thing forward. Anything short of that, like whoever you're talking about right now, and I don't care who it is. I, I truly don't, but that's trolling. That is somebody that is asking for attention. Okay. That, that, that's all that he's just trying to be the center of something or she, that's that's all. There's there's nothing um, objective about uh, criticizing somebody else. You know, have you whoever this person is, has he ever sat down with Corey Good or any of the other researchers or people that he was pointing fingers at? Have you ever sat down with them, broke bread, talked with them? Right. He's basing it all on uh, 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 wh from what because I haven't read what you're talking about, so I don't know. But it just sounds like he's just trying to uh, uh, start a trolling campaign uh, to get people to react, and and he can have a bunch of comments on Facebook. That's 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 ultimately probably what you're talking about, you know. And and if he's really listens to this show, he knows the phone number. Three two three eight two five five zero four five. Bring it. Let's have a conversation. Let's have it. What What is it that you believe? What is it that you trust? Well, let's talk about that. What you know? What is? Yeah, it? Yeah, he was. Um, he was. He was just. He was just. You know, and, and it's not just him. I mean, some. You know, there's. It just seems like uh, multiple. You know, multiple uh, people online who you know think they're somebody. You know, they're all. You know, they're all. I don't know, being real hipster about it and just, you know, they seem to be hating on everybody that seems to be mainstream as far as, you know, ufology goes. Right. But uh, I mean, he was just, I mean, he was hating on the whole contact in the desert. He was straight up telling everybody, don't go. It's, it's, it's bad juju. You know, it's just, it's just <laughs> new age, new age cult, you know, you know, 
the psyops thing and and you know he was he's like you know you know like i said it was laughable <laughs> Psyop- but, he actually said psyops uh actually the, the, the specific term i i remember googling was a uh, oh what was it like Cointel Pro, you know. Uh, oh yeah, Cointel. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, is so, funny. That's funny. I mean, that's funny. And look, yeah. like, this is this is the, really what is hysterical. Okay, and 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 I get it. I have uh, had so many, so many people of uh, through every single avenue of communication with me. Uh, tell me that I am CIA, that I'm disinfo, that I come from Washington, that my real name isn't Jimmy Church, that I'm an actor, and that you know I, I, I'm I've you know it, it all I've I've heard it all, and the craziest thing about that is not only is it just laughable, it's comedy. If you could, and I say this to everybody, if you could just live a day in my shoes. Come over to the house, come out to Burbank, hang out with Rita and myself and and have a dinner and and cook out and and see what my life is about. <laughs> you guys would they would just laugh. They would uh, it, it's the exact opposite of anybody that wants to say that about this show or anything else. This is a true, true family run fun environment that we do we try to find the best guest we want to have the most uh, uh knowledgeable intelligent fun conversation for everybody to engage in we want to raise our dogs uh hang out with our children our family cook food and figure out this conspiracy that is running the world <laughs> that's all that's it that's it that's it there's nothing else to it there's nothing else to it but that. And how cool is that if you can live your life that way, right? Well, that's what I do. Yeah, and um, you know, I just like like I said, it's just it's just uh, it's funny because these people are they're you know they're getting all conspiratorial and paranoid about you know about just the you know there's like I said last time I called there's just such a you know, there's just such a rift in ufology, you know, just kind of everybody's, you know, just, you know, biting at each other. But, um, no, another thing I wanted to bring up, um, when I called, uh, I, I heard you say that I, I just recently, like, I, like I've told you, you know, in the past year really is when I've kind of embraced, you know, again, like kind of the, you know, the new age metaphysical side of the phenomenon. And, Part of that is finding out who Terrence McKenna is. You know, I've gotten a little bit familiar with him, and I just heard you say that uh, apparently there's a movie coming out that's being yeah, about him being played by Jim Carrey. So I'm I'm totally looking forward to that. Um, I don't I don't know what else you know about that, but or what you have to say about Terrence. <laughs> well, Terrence, uh, okay, Terrence. I I went through a Terrence phase, I think, like everybody does. Once you hear him speak one time or watch one of his interviews or, or read a little piece on him, you get sucked in, right? And you do. And I, I went down that road. Um, and although some of his discoveries and his comments and his theories, um, I especially today, I think are groundbreaking, earth-shattering stuff. I really do. But there's another part of Terrence that I've been very public about, and I'll say it again. Maybe dude just like to take drugs. <laughs> he liked to well, get high. And he did. And when he did do it, he did it in excess. You know, he went to a 3D parallel world for months at a time. Right? I'm just... And I don't think and, uh, I don't think he ever came back. Well, I'm kind of glad you you brought that up as a segue because um, you, uh, uh, I mean I'll just say it. You know that's another part of you know my uh, evolution is I, I've I've had a strong desire for many months now to uh, you know try some some. Uh, psilocybin you know some some uh magic mushrooms and maybe even experiment with some dmt and well you're saying he you know i mean i, I, I was of course i uh, i was aware that you know he had dabbled in that stuff i guess that's obvious and i, I guess i guess you can take it to uh the extreme but i mean 
So what are your what are your thoughts on hallucinogenic psychedelic drugs? Well, I mean, it's been many, many years uh, since since I I went down that road. Um, I mean, uh, it's been a long time. Um, I have done everything. Okay, there you go. It's all you know. I've done everything. I've done everything twice. <laughs> so, so when I when I joke about drugs or pot or or whatever mushrooms uh, or a- any of that stuff, it's um, uh, it's a world that I was in decades ago. Um, today, I I I just I I well, I'm afraid of it now. That's the other thing. I'm, I'm too old. But DMT. Now, putting everything else aside, okay, uh, 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 LSD or or magic mushrooms and all of that. Okay, there's there's something to all of that, especially the interdimensionality part of it. But DMT and ayahuasca, um, I think, uh, scientifically need to be investigated a little bit because I think that there's there's something going on. Uh, that everybody is having the same experience with. Um, I have not done DMT. I have not done ayahuasca. Uh, I, I do know, and I have consulted with many people that uh, uh, that have done it. That it, it, it it's a ceremony, and you need to uh, have somebody there that is in control, that is not you know partaking, that is there to get make sure that you go and come back. Right, <laughs> I'm being serious. So it has to be the right place at the right time. Uh, I'm sure that before I die that uh, I will go and check it out. But the experiences that people have on DMT, and that only last for eight minutes, right? That's it. That's it. You are you are stone cold sober 10 minutes later. But for those eight, not ayahuasca, that's a whole other thing. But DMT... Um, at least you know that you're going to be back on planet Earth in eight minutes. But the visions that you have in the world that you go to, uh, everybody around the planet that writes about their DMT experience talks about the exact same things, right? It's not different for everybody. It's the same for everybody. So I I think that there is something going on. I, I really do. Yeah, I think. and... Yeah, and uh, well, I mean, I I kind of had plans to uh, have a, a a buddy around just to make sure I don't you know totally lose my mind. But also, you know, I wanted to make clear that you know I'm not looking to to try you know the stuff just recreationally. Like I, I think I told you last time, you know, I'm I'm all about consciousness nowadays, and I see those as you know different avenues to expand your consciousness. So that you know that's that's my main reasoning for wanting. Cause I, you know, I want to, you know, I want to try, you know, I want to try shrooms and I'll, I'd like to try DMT and, and that ayahuasca. I'd, I'd like to experience that and just like, cause I mean, it, I'm captivated by where, you know, I mean, it just, it, yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it, it's really exciting to think, you know, what I might experience, but you know, it's like you said, you know, you, you know, you want to be in the right you know, right time, right place, right mindset. And, yeah, it's got to be a controlled uh, environment. And one thing is for sure on this 420 day, um, it could be <laughs> the key to the universe, right? It could be the key to everything. It could be. I don't know. I'm only talking about the research that I have done and the reading that I have done. I have not I have not done DMT. The reason, it's, this, is, this is the other thing, though. And, Kevin, you need to be really really aware of dmt um and and where you are getting it from and who is making it and so forth i i all i have heard is you just need to make sure that the source is correct you know and that that's it and that's uh, you know that's that part of it ayahuasca to do a correct ayahuasca ceremony you've got to go down to south america and you've got to be in the right environment, the right place at the right time with the right shaman and and everything is is uh, that's what I'm saying, controlled environment. You know, it's not something yeah, that I'm, you just go out and do. You know, it's 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 not. Uh, and I, I I am reticent, Kevin, to recommend I'm not recommending it. I'm not condoning it at all. Uh, at all. It is uh it is a I think that DMT and uh uh, and, and ayahuasca are, are such a, 
you know, opening up another dimension or a parallel world and connecting with those gods and and seeing the visions that you are going to see on the other side and and connecting with are are life changing momentous things and the possibility of visiting a parallel world is inviting right it, it it is all of that but if something is that powerful right then it, it could also be too strong and it could also be incorrect and what if it wasn't the right the right drug you know you don't want to damage yourself so it's just you need to make sure that everything is in play correctly that's what that's one of the reasons yeah, and, why go ahead yeah you brought up like you brought up the sourcing, and I mean, that's something I've already, you know, some of the people I've talked to, you know, as far as connections, you know, I've told them, like, hey, you know, like, I want, like, I want a quality product from a trusted source. Like, I don't want, I don't want just some guy's brother's cousin that you know from college who's got some, I mean, you know, like, and that, that just makes it harder. But, um, you know, but yeah, and the, just the way you talked about it just now, like, you know, that's kind of, that's what's so, you know, inviting about the, you know the the potential to to try it but uh yeah you know um, what you should yeah, do uh, you know what you should do kevin and we're going to head towards a break here so i want to thank you in advance for the phone call uh what you should do is and you may have done this but do it more if you have uh already is just go and read online just go and read about people's personal experiences Go and read because there's a lot of it out there. It is so life changing for people that they want to put the stuff into words, and so there's a lot of uh, a lot of it out there where you can share those experiences and and go and 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 read about it and 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 do your own research. And as you go down that road, I I know I know from everything that I have done to the people that I have talked to that uh, yeah. See, somebody just posted. There's two different kinds of DMT. You know, just go in and read as much as you can, but read about other people's experiences because that will help you um, uh, with uh, not only what to expect, but maybe to take some of the fear out of it, too, as well. Or maybe it'll scare the crap out of you when you won't do it. Right, <laughs> which is yeah, kind I've of, already started reading up on the stuff. So yeah, yeah it's kind of the side of the fence I'm at. I, I'm at. It scared the crap out of me. You know, uh, I, t I tell you what, I would what I would love to do is is take like a pilgrimage out to the west and just like live with some natives for a week or two and and just you know smoke some peyote with them and just right. you know just really or like travel down to Australia and live with the Aborigines for right. a week or a month. That would that would be awesome. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, certainly mushrooms in uh, the uh, the western desert of the United States, uh, those go hand in hand. So there you go. Thank you, Kevin, man. Be safe and be well, and uh, keep me posted. I will. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much. All right, see you. See you. All right, I'm going to take a break right here. 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. Yeah, man, I got to be, I got to be nervous, or I got to be careful here. I can't condone. I can't, but we all wonder, don't we? DMT. It's Faded Black. I'll be right back. On this 420. Welcome back. Faded Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Saying hello to everybody on the Bunker Cam. It's 420, man, and I am, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, it's Thursday night, it's Fader night, and uh, taking all of your phone calls, but judging from the chat rooms and, and Twitter and the email that is coming in, are you guys all stoned? <laughs> it's the entire audience. Look at, <laughs> oh man, uh, I dare one of you fader knots to call in and do a bong rip on the air. I just, I dare you. There's, there's my dare. And let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on fade to black. Jimmy. Yes. Request. Hey, Rick, how are you, man? I'm doing good, man. It's good to hear your I voice. I give you, I thought I'd give you a call because, um, I got word from Matt, uh, Dave V contact in the desert. Uh huh. That, uh, he put me on uh, the house mods in the Lotus Room. Oh, cool! And you know who's you know who's appearing there. <laughs> I <laughs> do. Silly. So you're going to be my guy, huh? 
in the house mines there, and then I've got two gigs at the amphitheater, and I'm not sure if you're going to be doing one of those, but uh, okay. there's, there's quite a few of those events going on. Right on. But, uh, you know, I, I was listening to Giorgio Tukalos. Was that last night or the night before? Uh, Monday, and, Monday night, Monday night. Um, time flies. Yeah, huh? it does, it does. <laughs> I... um. He said something that was interesting to me, and I don't, I don't share the same sentimentism. Sentimentism, is that a word? It, it could be. Um, it is now. <laughs> it could be right. Uh, he said that he didn't believe that aliens were taking people's souls. And do you remember I started to tell you this experience that I had in uh, 1971 at Criteria Studios? Yes. You remember that? Oh event? yes, I do. I do, of course. It it gets it gets really deep. I mean, I've, we've just touched the surface. I need to sit down and talk with you about that whole event. But what I experienced was a little bit different. Uh, number number one, in in those days, people didn't see gray aliens. I don't I don't think they existed. Um, I believe that the gray aliens, well, first of all, I, I think that we kind of manifest because I manifested the the spaceship. It, it, I had a real attachment to it. Mm-hmm. And that was like my, my experience, my spaceship. And the people that I saw were, that was also my manifestation. Um, and I asked one of these, one of the guys on the board, if if he was Jesus Christ, and he chuckled, and he mentioned to the two guys that were standing in the other end of the room. He said, "Did you hear him?" He he asked us if if I was Jesus Christ, and I think the whole abduction thing ended right then or I woke up or it was kind of like colonoscopy. You wake up in the middle of a colonoscopy and you're not exactly sure what just took place. But I believe that I saw these guys as, as, as humans as uh, possibly looking like Jesus Christ. I don't know why I would have said that. If he was a little gray alien, I certainly would have asked him if, if he was Jesus Christ. Right, right. So, so I, when I say manifest, I just mean I, I think they're able to appear to us in a way that doesn't scare us. Right. You might be somebody different than I see it's whoever you're comfortable with. And I think where these gray aliens started to come in to the picture is, I don't know if you remember very early on, uh, twilight zone. Uh, it might even been that guy from man from Munkle, that blonde guy. He was a little alien. He had a big head. And if you think about that, that show, the twilight zone, that was in black and white. So here's this little skinny guy with a big head, and and he's gray because the the you know the Twilight Zone was in black and white. Right. And I I, I mean I don't want to say that people are imagining everything because something's definitely going on, but our our mind also plays very funny tricks on us, and we're trying to make sense of all of this, and we feel comfortable with saying these are cute little gray aliens when in fact they could be uh, much more uh, threatening than, than a cute little gray alien. And here's where I disagreed with, with Giorgio. Uh, if these things started out as um, artificial intelligence, AI, um, and they have millions of years on us, you know, advanced millions of years. I mean, like the only thing that that machine or that Android, the only thing that that thing cannot do is really experience what it's like 
to have a soul. Yeah, and um, and I hear you. But let me let me say this though: there was one comment that Giorgio made uh, towards the end of the interview that I thought was was genuine and it was spot on. He goes, man, when that day happens, we'll find out that we're, we were all wrong, that we don't know anything. And remember, now that, so that kind of encapsula- encapsulates everything that he had said there. You know, he's done a lot of research, and he's been uh, looking at this for, for many, many years and has been exposed, and he's out there doing his thing. So based on his exposure from the evidence that he has been, you know, he's been on site looking at this, touching these things. Um, and so he's developed his own views. But with all of that, he, he ended it with, you know what, we'll find out that we it's not what we think, that we don't know anything. Um, and, and touching upon the the uh the little grays or or whatever this is this is my take on that and uh, and i mean this and i'm not trying to be funny okay i i want to be serious here for a second but if if we got a ship full of um astronauts together you know 20 30 you know a collection and we took off and uh, you know, speed of light, find a wormhole and go to another another uh, galaxy, another solar system and, and land on that planet. And we step off the ship and, and we're standing there. You have to stop and think for a second what they are going to see. They are going to see white, black, Asian, right? Three different you know, short, fat, skinny, a redhead, a blonde, freckles. Think about that for a second. And what if we stepped off that ship with a couple of pets? What if we stepped off the ship with our dog, too? Right? Now, they don't know anything. They are seeing... Uh, five different alien species that kind of look the same. They all got two arms and two legs, but but that one is is really short. You know, pointing at the dog, and they may even think that the dog is the the captain. You know, they don't know, and and especially but, since we follow them in, with little plastic bags. Well, uh, yeah, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. Dogs. And so they're wondering who's the boss. There so and, and that and that's just from you're Earth. missing my point. Uh, but but that's right. just from Earth, Rick. Coming, oh, Jimmy, man, uh, listen, I'm losing you. Uh, l- listen to me. Can you hear me? Uh, you're losing me. Can you hear me now? Oh, can yeah, you- I can hear you. I lost you. Okay, but you can hear me now. You're back, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's just from Earth. That's Earth going out from a single point going out. Those are Earthlings. But Earth is getting visited by many different planets. So we're seeing all kinds of things uh, that that don't, uh, different alien species and civilizations that quite possibly don't even know each other. And we are assuming that everything that is coming here to planet Earth should all look exactly the same. And that just, that just doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, who is to say that those little grays, that there aren't 15, 20, 30 infinite versions of them, just like we have here on Earth, because every single human being is different. They all look different. So uh, we can't, we cannot get sucked into every single thing that is here has to look exactly the same. It just doesn't make any sense. And that's, that's, that's the way that I look at it. That's, uh, it can't be any different. It, it just well, can't. Well, that's assuming that they are coming from a different planet. That is assuming they're coming from a different planet, yeah. Now, now, if if there is a cabal of people that existed on this planet since before the Ice Age, since before the Great Flood, uh, basically keeping this planet uh, uh, ruling us, a prison planet, uh, this is where I get um, 
involved with with um or, uh I'm sorry. Um <laughs> my mind slipped away from me for a minute. The um wh- what do they call it when they used to sacrifice sacrifices? Um Sacrifices are crazy things. We've always been trying to appease the gods. And maybe there's more to it than just pushing a person into a, a volcano so that so that it doesn't erupt. Maybe maybe these are this artificial intelligence maybe they are searching for souls. Maybe this is maybe maybe there are people that will sacrifice other souls so so these this AI um knows what it's like to to love and experience uh, love and pain and and uh you know human emotions which which they lack um if, if there are grays i mean they they're androids and they they don't have a sex well we um, don't yeah, again we we don't know uh, officially uh, i i haven't broke bread with a gray you know, I haven't sat down and asked him any questions, but I, I will. I, I what I can assure you is this: um, no matter what, no matter what, Rick, the 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 species, the civilizations that are out there, we cannot relate to them. We we have no idea about. About things, you know, the, everything in our life, and when, I, and I mean this in the broadest of sense, in our life, right now, we we have cars, we have streets, we have schools, we have television, we have theater, we have bands, we have uh, the internet, we have clothes, we have culture, we have we ha- everything that we can just sit here and talk to somebody else about and relate to food and and, and drink, but everything, that's us. But they, their culture. What, what, I mean, just what if? And this is uh, the the basic of the basics that they don't have any of those things. That everything in their life that they do, it has nothing to do. With, we cannot relate to it. So that goes down to things like a, a soul. Do they have a soul or not? Don't know. Do they have religion? Don't know. Maybe there's no religion at all. You know, but we can't, no matter what it is, we have no idea. We can't relate to it because there's no direct connection. So when when somebody says something is crazy as uh, they don't have souls and they're, and they're coming here to get souls, maybe. I mean, as crazy as that sounds, we can't relate to what's going on in their planet. We don't have any idea. Money. Maybe they don't even, maybe nobody even works, right? I mean, it could be, it will absolutely be the opposite of what we think uh, uh, is possible because here we only have our own experiences and, and what goes on on another alien planet, another alien world and another solar system inside or outside of our galaxy uh, it's, it's we can't relate to it. We can't. We can only guess. And when we guess, and this is the, the, my point, when we guess about alien cultures, we're basing it on what we do here. That's what we base right. it on. Well, that's yeah. That's trying to make a, a explain to a, a blind person what a color is. Well, if they, if they don't experience it, they don't have that sense that you cannot describe it to them. Well, and and some of the basic things here um, that that I talk about this so much, Rick. Some of the basic basics here are what happens after we die. That's the one fundamental question. You know what what happens. And are we alone in the universe? You can go back tens of thousands of years, and I can guarantee you Stone Age man was looking at the stars tripping out, right? And we've tripped out ever since. And and we've wondered what happens, you know, when, you know, Stone Age man and his wife is dead. He's wondering what, what is going on here, right? Uh-huh. And and so uh-huh. these, these two fundamental questions have been around us for forever. So to this day... To this day, what are we doing right now? 
as a species, as Earthlings. We're sending out as many rockets and satellites as we can and building as many telescopes as we can and radio telescopes. And we're listening and looking and searching for life out there. That's our fundamental thing that we do every single day. Now, if uh, if there's one thing that I can say that E.T. would be like us is that, that they are doing the same thing, that they are out there searching the universe for life and they're wondering if they are alone now that's that's the one thing that i can assure you that they are doing that is the same as us i can't speak for money or in movies that, that could be their job they, their job could be to you know seed the universe and we will be doing the exact same thing as soon as we have that ability exactly. what, what are we talking about right now today firing up mars that's yeah. it, it's the closest planet to us. It's the one that's it, it's actually uh, a, a planet, right? Doesn't have much of an atmosphere right now. But the one thing gingers have no souls, <laughs> Justin. Just <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. Um, is this um, uh, the the first opportunity that we have? The 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 uh, the one planet that could possibly do anything for us is Mars, right? And all we talk about is going there and living and turning it around and terraforming it and building out an atmosphere and trying to figure out ways to get it done. And that's that's the the first opportunity. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go seed that planet with us. And there will be two Earths. You know, and I'm telling you, that's so. So why wouldn't E.T. be doing the exact same thing? Of course they are. And maybe yeah, they've I'm already sure they done are. it. Yeah. Maybe they've already done it. Maybe they've already but done it. it's not E.T. It's not E.T. we have to worry about. It. It's A.I. It's well, that's a whole other discussion. intelligence. That's a whole that other. <laughs> have the soul. That's a whole ETs, other. E.T.'s have souls. A.I.'s don't. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true at all, Rick. In fact, unless it's, they steal them. No. Unless, okay. Unless there's some way. Yeah. Who was it? Uh, someone spoke of. Uh, well, let me help you. Who was that? Well, he, let me... he, he was saying that 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 uh, when when people when these women are impregnated, they keep the baby till it's like eight years old or something, and then they implant it with their own soul so that they can live forever. I mean, I, I do believe that AI or someone is, is, is stealing souls. They are sacrificing. Uh, this isn't, like I said, this isn't just some silly story to push somebody in a volcano to make it stop erupting. I mean, I, I think we need to be, be careful and... Um, well, when you say AI, you're talking about artificial intelligence, right? Sure. Okay. It, it, your consciousness, yourself, you, right now, can be downloaded onto a, a, a chip, a hard drive. Could be. Could oh, be. no. Oh, no, no, yeah. no. They're doing it right now. Right the, now. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. I, I thought you were saying and, that, and that so, we could and so, if we could you be living in a in a hologram, uh, that, that, that's exactly my point. So, yeah. if you could go right now, and that's where you need to just just stop and trip out for a second. Trip out with me. It's four twenty. If you can download <laughs> yourself right now onto a computer and live on a uh -huh. chip, now you are artificial intelligence with a consciousness. You are making decisions inside of a computer, and you would not know the difference because you are alive on that chip. And so when you talk about artificial intelligence having a consciousness, if, if that ability to do that is there, which it is, I can tell you right now at Sandia National Labs, that is happening as we speak. So AI would have a conscience, consciousness. So that it, it's a it's a trippy idea, but the the only way we are going to go to the stars is if you Rick Quest with that last name, right? You are living on a chip and you live forever, and you're on a computer and you're gone. Whether the computer is in a robot body 
or living on a hard drive somewhere, that's how we are going to get to the stars. That's that's the only way it can happen. We need to be immortal. And just think pretty about hard to, just think pretty about hard it. to grok, huh? And just think about yeah, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and think about how smart you would be by the time you got there. You know, have a good thousand light years of learning. Well, that should happen pretty soon, huh? I mean, it's, I think everyone will be plugged in, you know, 10, 20 years, and everyone should have all the knowledge known to man. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a pretty Implanted scary. in their brain, you know? It's, it's certainly it's the next front. Brain. Yeah, it's the next frontier. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, what, human point or 2.0? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly yeah. what it is. And it, it, it's something that um, is inevitable. Um, my only fear with it is that we have to uh, we have to be able to have an off switch somewhere. Um, be, look, every everybody's different, and if you had some crazy uh, megalomatic, just out of control persona that is driving in the uh in the internet that is taking over everything because that is their personality and now they're getting smarter than everybody else and they want to take over the world you know we need to be able to control that guy or that girl that's that's what's crazy that's what's nuts how do we we need to have an ai police force you know how how do we control and keep you know people uh, 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 these, uh, this artificial world contained, it, it, you're going to have to contain Rick. You can't allow Rick to get too smart or too powerful because in, in the machine world, once you start learning really, really fast, well, the next thing you know, that really fast in a matter of minutes gets really fast in an order of magnitude. And then a day later, it's super out of control a week later, you're 10 trillion times smarter than you were when you were first put on the chip. I mean, it, 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 well, it's like that. And that's what I'm talking about here. We can't allow that to get out of control. And uh, Well, that's maybe where... that has already happened. Oh, it has. But there's, like, but there's like this cabal of people that while we all started over, there's still this select group of people that that had all the knowledge it, look this is this is this is what i'm tripping on with sandia and darpa and the, the other research organizations that are out there google is certainly doing it and and so forth uh they're doing it here at uh, the university of southern california they're doing it at berkeley lawrence livermore i could go on and on and on the different research organizations that are messing with ai and computer interfaces to the human brain is they have to have a serious air gapped situation that these the this experimenting with AI has to be controlled and not allowed to jump out into the internet because that is just like any other virus or malware that could run out of control that could exactly so the yeah. the experiments that are going on with ai right now they must be on the most singular air gapped uh, uh computers that are are sitting completely independent of the world they have mm -hmm. to they have to because if that runs amok then uh you think i robot <laughs> was a trip right think about that right all right. Hey, Rick, great phone call, man. And uh, I really appreciate that. And we'll be seeing you. I can't believe it, man. We're going to see you in less than uh, four weeks out there at Contact in the Desert. So, uh, yeah, next month, man. And, uh, and okay. that's good. So uh, if, if any audio goes wrong Friday night, email Rick. You know who to blame. Yep, I'll that's be there. All right. Thank you so much, Rick. <laughs> be safe, my friend. All right, bro. I love you. I love you right back. Thank you so much. Rick West, everybody. And uh, he'll be running the sound in the video for Fade to Black when we broadcast live out of Contact in the Desert, May 19th through the 22nd. It's Fade to Black. It's Thursday nights, Fader nights, 420. What a great conversation right there. Great phone calls tonight. I'll be right back. 323-825-5045. Welcome back. 
Fade to Black, Fader Night, Thursday night. I'm in the chair. 323-825-5045. You know, two of the the biggest things went down this week. One, Bill O'Reilly, you know, getting sacked over at Fox. We're talking about somebody that reached millions and millions of people every single night for the last 15 years. Uh, and not one phone call tonight about Bill O'Reilly. It says a lot about this audience. That's why I love you guys. But uh, not one phone call. Uh, That is a very, very trippy situation. Not one phone call. And the second thing is Julian Assange. Unbelievable situation going on right now with Assange and the United States. Um, And especially when you think about how pivotal... WikiLeaks and their influence on uh, not only world events, and I've brought this up so many times, uh, uh, WikiLeaks, and well, and Anonymous, too, you know, started off one way and ended up uh, uh, literally being able to control world events. WikiLeaks had a lot to do with our most recent election, and Trump loved WikiLeaks, loved them, right, when they were on his side. And and now the the tide has changed. The mood has changed. I'm not so sure that messing with WikiLeaks is the right thing to do. But now, United States authorities are, have prepared charges to seek the arrest of Julian Assange. The Justice Department investigation of Assange and WikiLeaks dates to at least 2010, when the site first gained all of the attention for posting thousands of files that were stolen by Chelsea Manning. Prosecutors have since then struggled with whether the First Amendment uh, precluded the prosecution of Assange, but now believe that they have found a way to move forward. There's a couple of things, and when I get to the end of this, I'll, I'll, I'll explain my thoughts on this during president obama's administration attorney general eric holder and officials at the justice department determined it would be difficult to bring charges against assange because wikileaks wasn't alone in publishing the documents stolen by manning several newspapers including the new york times did the exact same thing the investigation continued but any possible charges were put on hold The view of WikiLeaks and Assange began to change after investigators found that what they believe was proof that WikiLeaks played an active role in helping Edward Snowden disclose his massive cache of classified documents. Assange remained remains holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, uh, seeking to avoid arrest, uh, any warrants on rape charges that are uh, continuing in Sweden. But in recent months, United States officials have focused on the possibility that a new government in Ecuador would expel Assange, uh, again, our worldwide influence, right, and that he could finally be arrested. But the left-leaning presidential candidate who won the recent election (laughs) in Ecuador has promised to continue to harbor Assange. So that got uh, brushed aside. Last week, in a speech at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, CIA Director Mike Pompeo went further than any U.S. government official in describing a role by WikiLeaks that went beyond First Amendment activity. Pompeo said that WikiLeaks directed Chelsea Manning to intercept specific secret information, and it overwhelmingly focused on the United States. Aha! Right? Assange, he's untouchable. As long as he remains in the embassy in London and Ecuador has not changed its stance on Assange's uh, extradition, he is safe. Attorney General Jeff Sessions said at a news conference today that Assange's arrest is now a priority. Assange's attorney, Barry Pollack, says that WikiLeaks is just like the Washington Post and the New York Times, which routinely publish stories based on classified information. WikiLeaks, he says, publishes information that is in the public's interest to know, not just about the United States, but other governments around the world, end quote. 
Now, Assange has also compared WikiLeaks to a news media organization that uses documents provided by whistleblowers to expose the actions of governments and powerful corporations. Okay? But this is where it gets funky. Not only for Barry Pollack, but for Assange himself. Assange has no First Amendment freedoms. He's sitting in an embassy in London. He's not in the United States, and he's not a U.S. citizen. (laughs) Therefore, he has no First Amendment rights. He doesn't. And they finally figured all of that out. I, I, uh, uh, I, oh man, I appreciate what Assange has done and I appreciate what his, 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 uh, oh man, I just want to say his, his belief system. Okay. I, I agree with all of that, but there is another side of Assange and I, and I bring this up so much is that um, the, you need to kind of pick and choose what you're disclosing out there. That's, that's the other thing. I mean, what is the real benefit of this? I mean, what is the real benefit? That when, you are, uh, when you're putting documents out there um, a, a, about malware and, and what our government is doing and, and the methods of, of what they're doing, I'm not so sure... That that is a good thing. And it's not about that, you know, should we know this or not? Of course, I, I feel that we should. But when it gets a, a, on the on the cursory level, at the top level, we need to know what's going down. But the, the deep secret stuff underneath that, that's the stuff that doesn't need to get out there. And the there are there are people out there with bad intentions. That can use this against us. It could use it against Assange. And um, I talked about Zero Day, uh, the movie, and and Stuxnet. Go and watch that, and especially when you get to the section about Zeus at the end. the The world right now is a different place. Okay, the ability, and I talk about this so much, but you need to listen to me. The ability to go and shut down your world is in anybody's hands. Now, and I'm talking about, you know, you have the macro and micro levels of things. But let's just go with your house, your home. You need to do a few things every single day. You need to drink water and bathe. You need to eat And you need to either heat or cool your home if you can. And if you don't have an air conditioner, how about a fan? And if you don't have a heater, then maybe how about, uh, you know, other alternative? There are things that you need to do every single day. You need to be able to shop. You need to be able to buy gas. These are things that, you know, it's fundamental things for survival. And the ability today to take all of that away from you how long do you think you will survive? How long? How long do you think it will be before you are turned into just a, just a, a, a hunter killer? How long? And I'm talking about the most passive of you. And I don't care. <laughs> you could be, I, I, I'll tell you what. Um, a hungry, pissed off, 70-year-old woman is somebody that I don't want to mess with. <laughs> right? Think about that. You could be the most humble, nice person in the world, but if all of that is taken away from you, you know, that's a, that's a personal attack on you and you are going to survive. You're going to go into survival mode. Now, again, I'm not talking crazy fear porn here. What I'm saying is one day you could wake up And your television doesn't work. And then you go and you find out that your water is no longer clean or filtered. And that that what's coming through is maybe poison. So now you can't drink. You don't have anything in your refrigerator. 
So then you go to your car and you go to to start it and it doesn't start because somebody has uh, attacked its system electronically. So you walk to the store and there's nothing there because everybody beats you to it. So now you have nothing and you go home and your ramen noodles that you have you can't cook because you don't have water and you don't have a way to heat it. And now all of a sudden you are stuck. And that's what I'm referring to here. When I talk about malware and the ability, somebody out there can literally just shut us down, shut us down. If, 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 if suddenly the street lights go out and the delivery systems go down and the internet is interfered with and the distribution networks for food and, and, and gas and water and all of that is interrupted, we are just two or three days away, two or three days of madness. And that's what that's that's where I, I back all of this back up to Julian to just chill this stuff out. That that's the kind of stuff that WikiLeaks it, it, you are not progressing anything. Stuxnet and and other malware that is out there, um, which was which was built to shut down um, Iran's uh, uh, centrifuges. Okay, now, and it was a very specific system, and it, it was very uh, uh, elaborate, and it was pointing at certain uh, 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 hardware devices that were manufactured by somebody to, uh, to increase and destroy or slow down these centrifuges. Okay, it was very sophisticated. But <clears throat> once that code got out and other people with bad intentions are looking at that code that's one thing and they start to figure out and see ways of implementing things but the other part of it that is dangerous is that they see that it can be done and once they see the idea and they get the idea in their heads now that same thing now, remember, Stuxnet was uh, uh, a piece of malware that was going to get inside of the Iranian nuclear facility and the control units that are outside of the centrifuges that control the speed of the centrifuges have a little serial number on it. And they control the RPMs of the centrifuges that have to be uh, balanced and, and run at high speeds perfectly. You mess with that, they spin apart, they explode and and and, and do funky things. But it's the idea that, oh, you don't need to control somebody's computer. You could control the device that is controlling something else. Oh, and you can disguise that the little device that is in this electrical plant or controlling the cooling systems at your supermarket or controlling the filtration system on water or controlling the stoplights in the street or uh, the idea now is out there for everybody that it's it's not the computers you don't have to shut down the computer systems no you all you got to do is control some other external device that is on the system and that polluted thought now is out there for everybody. And the United States backed up and went, now it's not so much that Iran knows that we went and did this. Now everybody out there has <laughs> these thoughts in their head that they can actually go and, and, and bring something down, whatever they want. All you got to do is control some kind of external device. And, 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 and so and this is where it gets nuts. We let the idea out. We let the idea out. Any, anybody now, they, they, you could just point around your house, point at some electronic device in your house. Just think about this. So now <clears throat> the idea is there. For anybody that any terrorist or anybody that's bored that knows how to write code can go and just pick something out, 
pick some external computer control device out. Find out who that manufacturer is, get some serial numbers, and figure out how to control that device. In the in the documentary Stuxnet, they found out uh, through, you know, uh, and this was done right here in Los Angeles, by the way. Um, uh, they got the control device, and they were... Uh, the, with the malware, they were blowing up a balloon. That's all. They used this little device to turn on and off this motor and and blow up the balloon or, you know, and stop so the balloon didn't explode or cause the motor to continue to blow up the balloon. Now, that same mentality, that same thing, to be able to control an external device like that applies to everything in your life. And that's the part where, for me, with Julian Assange, when you start talking about this stuff and the ability to control television sets and iPhones and and Android devices, uh, all of that is polluting those minds out there that don't think logically like you and I do. And so you go and you bring down somebody like Assange instead of embracing him and trying to work together on this, you want to bring him down, I'm telling you, there is stuff on his servers that we don't want the bad people to know. Forget about embarrassing people in Washington, D.C., or in Moscow, or or in Israel, and, and politicians, or whatever. Nobody cares about that stuff. What scares me is the dude out there that is bored, and wants to just show, impress his friends that he can bring down the electrical grid in the United States or Brazil or Mexico or Canada or worldwide. You know, think about that. Our GPS systems, our GPS, what if something like that got interfered with? The very, very basics of your life in your home gets affected. This is not... Uh, affecting somebody in another country that you don't know anything about. Life is good here in the United States. You know, no, I'm talking about affecting you. The ability, do you remember, uh, do you remember, uh, it was probably two years ago on this show when I talked about the vulnerabilities in Android? Android uh when we talk about android we immediately think of our cell phones okay and and a vulnerability on our cell phones is is something that scares the crap out of us right but this same operating system that is here is in everything else all the manufacturers out there have adopted android into their systems and and android is simple it's it's easy it's, it doesn't take up much memory, and and it can operate just about anything. So if Android now, again, is in your televisions or in your cell phones or in your washing machines or in your refrigerators, and somebody just wants to have fun one day and shut down every smart refrigerator in the country or every smart TV in the country, they can. They can. And that's what that's that's the whole thing when when it comes to Assange uh, or anybody else out there that's like this, that is publishing stuff out there. You know, we let it. Stuxnet uh, again. Go watch the movie. Stux, Stuxnet was supposed to just sit on uh, an air gapped computer system at an uh, an Iranian uh, nuclear uh, fission material factory where they're cranking out nuclear material. That's that's what was supposed to happen. And the exact opposite happened. It went the other way and started affecting computers. And what, what was trippy uh, with it is it didn't do any damage. It didn't do any damage to your computer. You probably even got it on your computer and never even knew it, right? Because it was designed to only affect these control units on these centrifuges. So if it was on your computer, it was also dated to to not work after a certain date, right? Okay, but the what ended up happening was the bad guys got the code, <laughs> got the code, 
And they saw how sophisticated it was and how it could work and how it could sit on a system and how it could control something. And nobody would even know it was there because it wasn't doing anything on your computer. It was controlling an external device. Ingenious. It was. It was ingenious. But it, it ended up just going crazy and infecting all these computers around the world. And then suddenly the bad guys knew about it. And that's what I'm talking about here. That's what freaks me out about Assange. That his his original intent was noble, but now it's he hasn't controlled it. He hasn't controlled it, and, and bad stuff is now getting out there. And it's giving people that, uh, that may or may not have uh, bad intentions, it gives them ideas. It gives them ideas, and we don't need that. We don't need to. It's going to happen anyway. It's inevitable, but we don't need to push it forward. We don't need to push the agenda forward. The The scary thing for me is today, not only in the United States, but worldwide, today we don't have the the protections in place for bad things when it comes to the Internet and cyber warfare and cyber crime. We don't have we are not protected. We are completely vulnerable. Completely. And if anything started to go running amok at a, a nuclear power plant here or it, it, for me what is scarier is our electrical grid or our or if our cell phones got shut down today, our cell phone network and it, it wouldn't take much to do that. We're done. And that's what's scary for me. That's the scariest part is that today we don't have those protections in place. We just don't. I mean, our main focus here, if, 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 if I was Prezo Dent, if I, if I was Prezo Dent, I wouldn't worry about building planes. I wouldn't worry about building more aircraft carriers or submarines or nuclear missiles or updating this or the tanks or the new version of the Humvee. No. Uh, all of our dollars would be built on cyber warfare protections of the internet because everything now is wired. And we didn't know, uh, it, it's certainly in 1970, right? 1980, we didn't know what the internet was or how important it would be today. So we built on it and built on it and built on it and built on it and tagged onto it and got everything plugged in and connected. And now uh, it, it has helped everything and it, the economy and everything runs smoother and more efficient. I get all of that. But we forgot about the the dark side. We just thought everybody played by the same rules. And it's just not that. It's not that kind of party today. That's what I would do. I'm, I'm serious. Everything would be focused on that. Everything. And we don't, we don't have the manpower. We don't have people looking at enough computer screens and monitoring everything everywhere. We just don't. We just don't. One guy in an air gap system with a, you know, this is, this is a scary thing. I'll show, I'll show you right now. This is what blows my mind. I'm going to show this to uh, the bunker cam. That's 64 gigabytes, right? Look, look how tiny that is. Here is a, I've got these lying all over the studio. Here's an eight gigabyte, you know, thumb drive. You know, I've got these all over the place. I use them constantly. The most tightly air gap system. Anybody walks in and plugs this into to a computer somewhere, and we're done. That it's not a bomb. <laughs> it's worse. Think about that. That's it. Just walk in, done, runs itself. <laughs> And it's all over. That's what scares me. And that's the issue that I have with Assange. Me personally. All right. Man, what a great show tonight. Um, I had uh, some stuff that I needed to get to. Uh, yeah, the Chinese uh, have... Uh, the Air Force land attack cruise missile capable bombers were put on high alert Wednesday as the United States sees evidence that the Chinese military is preparing to respond to a potential situation in North Korea. This is a developing, very fluid. Uh, now we have a weekend to, to go through here. The good news is, is I'm not over at Coast to Coast, and I'm not taping for History Channel this weekend. Got a nice, relaxing uh, day in front of us. Oh, we're taking Monday off, uh, everybody. Monday uh, will be a repeat and replay because we'll be over with uh, Stephen Greer uh, in downtown L.A., uh, for the movie premiere of Unacknowledged. All right. 
Uh, let's see. A driver is lucky to be alive. I don't know if you've seen this video. His car was stuck and locked onto a truck right here in Southern California on the 15th freeway for four miles. Truck driver didn't know it. Everything ended well, but it was pretty trippy. Uh, the Russian Supreme Court today declared Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, the Christian denomination that rejects violence and extremist organization. They are banning the group from operating on Russian territory and putting its more than 170,000 Russian worshipers in the same category as the Islamic State. That happened today. Also today, a payment card featuring a fingerprint sensor, MasterCard, has been unveiled by MasterCard. The rollout follows two successful trials in South Africa. The technology works the same way as with a mobile phone payment. Users must have their finger over the sensor when making a purchase. It's pretty cool. You need to check it out. Is this a uh, part of Big Brother coming in? I think I'm always, you know, the chips and the cards. I'm always nervous about that now. But uh, I don't carry cash. So what are you going to do? All right. Another fader night down. Thank you to John Rappaport. One of the smartest men alive. Makes this show happen on Thursday night. Thank you to everybody that called in tonight. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Kamarian. Show is produced by Hilton J. Paul, Mark D. Kovar, LJ3, Renee, Jonas. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2017 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Got a weekend off, got Monday off. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Until then, everybody be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.